Andre? May I ask, Mr. Valdez, who is that young person whose hand my nephew Algernon is now holding in what seems to me a peculiarly unnecessary manner? That lady is Miss Cecily Carlyle, my ward. I am engaged to be married to Cecily, Aunt Augusta. I beg your pardon! <laughs> Mr. Moncrief and I are engaged to be married, Lady Bracknell. Is 
place to go in the whole world. And I don't care tuppence about social possibilities. Never speak disrespectfully of society, Algernon. Only people who can't get into it do that. <laughs> Yes, I felt that instinctively, but 
I couldn't wait all that time. I hate waiting even five minutes for anybody. I'm not very punctual myself, I know, but I do like punctuality in others. And waiting even to be married is quite out of the question. Then what's to be done, Cecily? I don't know, Mr. Moncrief. My dear Mr. Worthing, as Miss Cartoon states positively that she cannot wait till she is 35, a remark which I am bound to say seems to me to show a somewhat impatient nature. I would beg of you to reconsider your decision. But my dear Lady Dracknell, the matter is entirely in your own hands. The moment you consent to my marriage with Gwendolyn, I will most gladly allow your nephew to form an alliance with my ward. You must be quite aware that what you propose is out of the question. Then a passionate celibacy is all that any of us can look forward to. That is <laughs> not the destiny I propose for Gwendolyn. Algernon, of course, can choose for himself. Come, dear, we have missed five, if not six, trains. To miss any more might expose us to comment on the platform. <laughs> Everything is quite ready for the christening. The christening, sir? Is not that somewhat premature? Both these gentlemen have expressed a desire for immediate baptism. At your age! <laughs> the idea is grotesque and irreligious. Algernon, I forbid you to be baptized. I would not hear of such excesses. Lord Bracknell would be highly displeased if he learned that that was the way in which you wasted your time and money. If I understand, then, there will be no christenings at all this afternoon. I don't think that as things are of now, it would be much practical value to either of us, Dr. Chasuble. I am grieved to hear such sentiments from you, Mr. Worthing. They save of the heretical views of the Anabaptists, views I have completely refuted in four of my unpublished sermons. However, as your present mood seems to be one peculiarly secular, I shall return to the church at once. Indeed, I have just been informed by the pew opener that for the last hour and a half, Miss Prism has been waiting for me in the vestry. Miss Prism? Did I hear you mention a Miss Prism? Yes, Lady Bracknell, I am on my way to join her. Pray, allow me to detain you for a moment. This matter may prove to be of vital importance to Lord Bracknell and myself. Is this Miss Prism a female of repentant aspect remotely connected with education. She is the most cultivated of ladies, the very picture of respectability. It is obviously the same person. <laughs> May I ask what position she holds in your household? I am a celibate, madam. Miss Prism, Lady Bracknell, has been for the last three years Miss Cardew's esteemed governess and valued companion. In spite of what I hear of her, I must see her at once. Let her be sent for. She approaches. <laughs> she is nigh. I was told you expected me in the vestry, dear Canon. I have been waiting there for you for an hour and three quarters. Prism! Come here, Prism! Prism! Where is that baby? Twenty-eight years ago, Prism! 